Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Forge. This is... I was gonna say upcoming, because I've been playing the pre-release for uh, a few days now, but actually it's just come out on Steam a little bit earlier today. Again, I never know when these videos are gonna go out, but I'm gonna pr try to put it out pretty soon around the time of release, which is December 4th, uh, just so that, you know, people who are looking for the game can actually find some opinions about it. In any case, this is... Uh, an online, kind of like arena-based combat game, and a lot of the description for the game has come down to, like, it takes elements from MMOs and FPSs and combines them into one amalgam of, uh, you know, multiplayer combat experience. The easiest way to actually describe this game without going into the, like, vague overtones like that is basically to say, remember Smite, the MOBA game where you actually had, like, every shot was a skill shot and you played third person over the shoulder instead of, like, isometric view? Imagine Smite, but there's no, like, tower and ancient element to it at all, no MOBA element, it's just combat, and it's got elements from first person shooters like game modes, objective based game modes, I should basically say, but there's also team deathmatch as well. In any case, we are gonna get started here. Uh, as of right now, I should mention, by the way, that this is a green light title. So the community community actually voted for this to be available for purchase on Steam, and it's 20 bucks. But if you buy it right now, you get two copies. In any case, first thing I'm going to talk about is a, a little bit of a, a sore spot with the game. If you go to quick play, all you can do is random. Apparently, like you can't actually select any of these game modes to play, which is a piss off for me because when I try to learn a game like this, I always like to start at team deathmatch just so I can get a feel for the mechanics, then move into the objective based game modes. As a result. I've played this for about two hours so far, and I don't really understand any of the objective-based game modes because I don't really understand all of the basic mechanics of the game in the first place, and there's no real tutorialization to explain it. I mean, Capture the Relic, King of the Hill is all pretty uh, self-explanatory, but Arena and Relic Assault, I have no fucking idea. Beyond that, if we just go to play instead of quick play, uh, there's like a server browser and the ability to create a group and join friends in progress, but these are actually grayed out right now. Uh, you can probably still join a friend or a player, I guess, if you know their username. Uh, but there's no server browser for now, so really the only way to get into a game is quick play, which is kind of a piss off. But anyway, we're gonna quick play uh, and go random. So we're on North American servers right now. To be honest with you, the community has been fairly ro robust so far. I've never really had a problem getting into a game, even when there was not, uh, or b before the game came out on Steam, I should say. So this is a game where there are five classes, and I should mention this before we get started. There is a huge huge learning curve on this game. If you look, you got Assassin, uh, which is your standard, like, cloaking, high damage, but also pretty weak armor class. Uh, Pathfinder, which is a ranged class, which is very good at crowd control, so, like, stunning and disarming enemies, I guess is a good way to put it. Uh, we also have Pyromancer, which is, like, your sorcerer class. Shaman, which is your healer, and Warden, which is your, like, melee, high damage tank type class. In any case, I've been playing primarily as Pathfinder in the two hours or so that I've played the game. And if you think, like, it's hard to learn a game like Dota or League of Legends, where every character has four abilities, I mean, you're not wrong, because there's, like, hundreds of characters in those games. Uh, but this game, if we just select the Pathfinder here, you can see we have a ton of different abilities here. So if I just walk around, I mean, I can just, like, shoot using my left mouse button. I can also block using my right mouse button. Both of these take energy, uh, and you can see my energy meter down there in the bottom left of the HUD. But we also have all these various other skills, like I can shoot a shot that should keep this guy in place, as you can see, it just landed on him there, and then someone swapped him out. So, oh, there he is right there, now I'm stuck in place. There's a lot of shit that happens in this game, where it just, everything happens so quickly and so seemingly randomly, uh, that it can be difficult to tell. I think I just knocked him down with my uh, explosive trap. Anyway, I'll talk about my abilities again in a second. First things first. We're just gonna try to keep this guy in place and actually get a kill. If I get a kill at the start of this video, it would be amazing. Because I've gotten like four kills total in my entire time with this game. Yes, four kills in two hours. Part of that is because this is uh, a game with... Or sorry, I'm playing as a class that doesn't really do all that much damage, I suppose. Part of it is because oftentimes I'm just awful at this game. And some people, like, again, with all these like Kickstarter games that had early access to beta, uh, you know, there's been people who have been playing this game for like months. So I might not necessarily stack up well to them. So I'm getting butt fucked here by this guy. Uh, I'm just gonna try to escape, which is actually a really easy mechanic to do when you're the Pathfinder. Just press V, and you fire a shot uh, that keeps people in place, and we're gonna try to run away here. I also do have some active cloaking that I can do. So by hitting G, I can go into cloaking, but if I move, I go out of cloaking. Uh, but I can also do a swap here. So if I just look at somebody and press G on top of them, as you saw right there, I can do a swap. So I can send them out of, out of the fray of battle there and put myself back into it. Uh, I don't like this. Unfortunately, I don't have camouflage available for quite some time, so we're probably gonna die here. I did just put an explosive trap down to think maybe I have a chance to get away. Just jump around. Oh, uh, that is probably gonna kill me right there, I'm guessing. 
One of my major complaints about this game is I just died, is that it doesn't really feel like there's much uh, feedback on when you're actually like being hit. I mean, obviously you can see like your health bar going down to the bottom left, but apart from that and like the slight red bars on your screen, I, a lot of the time I don't really have a visceral sense of the fact that I'm being hit, and that can be a problem when you get into like a firefight or something, uh, and then you look down at your health bar and you're like, oh, I didn't even realize it, but I'm down to like 10% of my existing health. Anyway, let's talk about our other abilities really quick. So we've got our standard, just shooting arrow ability, which does X damage. Uh, we also have a barrage of arrows, which we can use right there. That's our E attack. Uh, which basically, if there's a lot of enemies, it'll just hit each one with an arrow, but it costs a little bit more energy. We have a poison attack, which stacks damage over time. We have an explosive trap, which I just dropped right there, and if someone steps on that, it'll explode. I have caltrops, which if I drop like that, and somebody steps on those, it'll slow them down. T is a blinding shot, which actually causes an enemy screen to go completely black for a little while. Except for the assassin, but we probably won't talk about that later. They have a special passive perk uh, that allows them to still see enemy outlines, I believe, when you get hit with that. And beyond that, we also have our active camouflage on G, which I've mentioned before. It also includes that swap. Finally! Oh god, how did you get here? Uh, on V, uh, we have our uh, pin foot, which is what allows us to uh, get away from these enemies. I guess the devoted one there. There's two classes, or two teams, I should say. The zealous and the devoted. Obviously, there's five classes. Uh, I should spoil this, not spoil it, but mention this before we get too far into this, that this video is going to consist entirely of Pathfinder play. There's a chance maybe I'll show off a tutorial for another class, but this is not the kind of game, at least when I'm playing it, uh, where I spend a lot of time mucking about with every single class to try to get a feel of which one's for me. This is a game, and actually I play a lot, I play MOBAs like this, I play Dota like this as well, and I apologize if you have some aversion to the word MOBA. Action RTS if you prefer. Um, but that's how I played those games as well, is basically I, I would just stick with one class until I learned it, and, and then move on. Uh, there's less classes, obviously, or heroes to learn in this game compared to a, a game like League of Legends or Dota 2. However, uh, the heroes are a little bit deeper as well, as you can see, or the classes are a little bit deeper with many more abilities. Uh, to the point where, you know, in my few hours with the game so far, I have a very only vague idea of what other classes are capable of doing. So I don't even know what game mode we're playing right here. I think it's King of the Hill. I'm just gonna try to pin these guys down. Oh, I should probably try to escape, actually. Uh, maybe I can go into active camo in a second, otherwise I'm probably gonna find myself dying. That was the, my explosive trap that just worked right there, so I'm just gonna hide over here. And maybe I can swap out with somebody who's far away to keep myself in a better position. So I'm just gonna stay hidden here, because I don't really want to get involved in a firefight that I can't win. Or an encounter that I can't win. Um, there's nobody really for me to swap with except for this guy over here. But I can't reach him. Okay, you know what? Let's just swap ourselves. Oh, I see arrows firing from like up here. Yeah, I can swap myself up here with that douchebag Pathfinder who was there. And then maybe I can just fire some volleys. Oh god, I botched it. Drop the explosive trap, get the fuck out of there. Generally speaking, the, the Pathfinder is very much a uh, crowd control class. So you're not the one doing the killing, you're the one doing the assisting for the most part. You're the one... Uh, doing the stuns, doing the slows, and things like that that are going to allow uh, your teammates that do more damage to actually take out the enemies. So, did this guy escape? What happened to that red dude that was right here? That was confusing. Uh, we're going to try to get people outnumbered. Is essentially how this is going to work. I'm just going to run in here, throw another explosive trap down, and if somebody jumps on that, obviously they will take some damage. But in the meantime, I spend most of my time just basically throwing cluster fucks of arrows out, hoping that I'm going to get assist points. Because again, I've only gotten like four kills in my entire time with the game. That might be just uh, a, me a measure of how awful I am at the game. I, I, I certainly would not necessarily disagree with that. Uh, but suffice to say, this is the kind of game that maybe doesn't really show well in a first impression type video. It's the kind of game where it's difficult to say after two hours if this is a good game or a bad game. It's also very difficult to see if you're brand new to the game, uh, as I imagine many of you watching this are, what the fuck is going on as the... It's just chaos here, basically. I wonder, uh, I don't think I hit him with the actual shot. Let's try to do another swap. That's some of the most fun you can have. So I'm not sure if I can swap through objects. I don't think you can. There we go. Just got one done there. Trap. This, I uh, missed on my shot, but he got me with the pin foot. Generally speaking, the level of competition in this game seems pretty high. I think this is maybe a little bit lower now that the game's actually out and other people who are not, like, founders of the game have bought it. This all being said, okay, we're gonna blind him and then just try to get away, basically, because I'm so low on health. I'm taking poison damage, I'm probably gonna die right here, yes. So let's look at our stats. Again, I, I really dislike, actively dislike the interface in this game and how I feel like I get no 
kind of visceral experience for A, my assists, and B, taking damage. Like, when I die, it's just like, oh, you died. If they just threw in, like, a kill cam or something so I could see what was happening as I died, I might even feel better about it. But I would actually love to have, like, an announcer or something. Maybe I'm getting too, you know, caughty or quaky here, but I would love to have an announcer just be like, you're running low on health, you're running low on health, because as is right now, the, the sound design of the game pretty much consists entirely of just grunting and groaning. Uh, which, that was a bad trap right there. Um, grunting and groaning, which is not really that appealing to me. Uh, maybe it is to some people who like a more minimal experience. Uh, but I don't really like it. So, let's just put it that way. I, I can't even get to the objective here. We're basically just playing Team Deathmatch, as you saw the guy in the bottom right say in the chat there. I'm not one of the best members on my team, I'm gonna guess. Uh, but this all being said, oh, we might actually have a chance to trap this guy here. Uh... Maybe I can get another assist. Oh, I got a kill, actually! So you are witnessing a very rare event in my history. I'm actually gonna try to save my teammate. Uh, I'm not sure if I saved my teammate or actually swapped out an enemy. But either way. Again, we're just gonna continue doing some crowd control here, basically. Dropping explosive traps that do damage to the enemies. And the tutorial in the game, I've gotta say, I've, I've mentioned the learning curve many times. Uh, as being kind of a, it, it's not necessarily a sore spot, but it's just the kind of thing that doesn't reflect well in a, a first impressions video like this. Uh, but the tutorial in the game is woefully, woefully inadequate uh, if you're, you're trying to learn how to play the, the game competitively, basically. It teaches you how to move, it teaches you the very unique ability for your class, so for Pathfinder it taught me how to do that swap. Uh, but apart from that, uh, you're pretty much on your own. Luckily, the, they have a, do have a fairly uh, well intentioned community, at least so far, on the forums. There are all sorts of community-submitted guides uh, that can help you learn how to play. That being said, uh, that's not really an excuse for not having a good in-game tutorial. But, uh, you know, there have been games that have been good games that have been guilty of that as well. Like, for example, when I got into Natural Selection 2, uh, which I still think is a fantastic game, uh, there was basically no in-game tutorial for that system at all. Or for that game at all, but it's still a, a fantastic game in its own right. Forgive me if my commentary seems a little bit stunted at times. I'm basically just caught in the middle of a fucking rainstorm here trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, for some reason, sometimes some of my abilities just become impossible to use. I think this might be due to the abilities of a different class, and as you notice, if you look at my health, I am gonna probably die here. Which again, due to the interface, seemed to, for me, it comes sort of out of nowhere, but that's okay, I guess. I really wish as well, when you started a match, it gave you, like, some kind of verbal or visual indication of what kind of mode you were playing. Because, like, right now, I hit tab, I expect to see what kind of game mode this is, uh, but I just don't. I see my stats and my rank. As you can see, I am doing pretty piss poor uh, on my team here. However, I, I have no idea what game mode it is. I it might be King of the Hill, it might be Arena... I have absolutely no idea. Maybe this is something, like, I've never played an MMO before, and this game seems, like, quite heavily inspired by... Uh, combative or adversarial combat in MMOs. So maybe if, you, if you're more familiar with that, you'd actually have a better time and you'd understand what the hell was going on here. But as of right now, I, I pretty much just do what I can, just like walking around, uh, trying to engage in some combat here. I'm not really 100% sure what the objectives are. Occasionally, there will be like hot spots that appear on the map. I guess we lost here. Again, it would be nice to have like, enemy is two points away from winning, enemy is 15 points away from winning. All I'm trying to say here, not necessarily that this is a bad game, but this is a game that is very, very, very unintuitive. And I mean, these games are already unintuitive uh, in the first place. Games, again, like Dota 2, Natural Selection 2, stuff like that. Games where there's a lot of strategy and a lot of depth of strategy usually have a very high skill floor in order to just have some level of competen competency at the game. Uh, this kind of takes it to the extreme. Also, I don't think there's any form of matchmaking, so, you, you know, you get paired with, with beta players and new players all the time. Basically, I just think this is a very hard game to learn, and the game doesn't do itself any favors uh, with respect to its tutorial system as well. I think there's a really uh, apparent and sorely missed opportunity for them to have a great tutorial system in this game, or even, like, beginner's lounges or something like that, but as is right now, I mean, you have to have some sympathy for them, I guess I should say, because given that this was greenlit as opposed to being... Uh, actually published through like a larger publisher or anything like that that might have more resources they're probably not dealing with the same kind of budget that a, a big multiplayer title would be dealing with so you know maybe server space or multiplayer features are a little bit of a uh, a luxury for them this all being said 
Uh, there, there's not really much excuse for this. So far in my time, I have not found this to be that fun of a multiplayer experience, which is unfortunate for them because there are a lot of really great polished and cheap multiplayer experiences out there that I think take precedent over this. Like, I don't really understand why I would play this over playing something like, I mean, I realize they're kind of different games, but uh, I, would, I would much rather play even something like Smite than something like this. Anyway, I'm just in camouflage right here. I'm going to try to swap out with like the back of this group because we've got a lot of enemies coming for us right here. Uh, for whatever reason, I can't seem to swap. I must be missing the mark. There we go. So I managed to swap that guy out and put myself in an unbelievably bad situation. But at least it was fun. I didn't actually see any of my teammates. Uh, so I figured I might as well just jump into the fray myself. I can't even enter active camo. I'm going to get fucking killed. Oh, there's my teammates. Did I run really far from the start of the map? Or did they just spawn on the other goddamn side? I have no idea. Anyway, we're going to respawn in like 15 seconds here. Respawn times seem uh, fairly long, but I guess it gives you a, a good opportunity to actually, uh, you know, spend some time thinking about what you did wrong, essentially. Um, but anyway, we're going to continue playing here. I might show off the tutorial system just to add, hopefully lend credence to my point that the tutorial system in this game is woefully inadequate. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for everyone because I want to show off an accurate representation of what this game is about, but this series is not about me reviewing games. This series is about me giving... You know, or putting two or three hours, one or two hours, depending on the game, I guess, into a game, and then giving my first impressions on how I feel about it. And I think most people, myself included, are going to have fairly mediocre or mixed opinions about the first, uh, you know, two hours or so of... I almost called it Smite. The first two hours or so of uh, Forge here. It's very, very new player unfriendly, and to be honest with you, it, most of the time that I spend playing, with, playing it, I just spend frustrated. Like, there's... It's, it's too easy to compare this to a variety of games that do many, many things better. I really want to get this guy to actually... Oh, I did trap him there. So let's drop our explosive trap and our caltrops. If I can, I think I'm out of energy or something. And then, then I'm just going to stack poison damage on him. As I understand it, from the guide that I read online... I must have gotten an assist there, right? Uh, from the guide that I read online, basically your combo is like run in... Or not run in, if possible, but hit them with a pin foot to keep them in place. Uh, then use, uh, poison and volley, which is that, like, three arrow shot, to do damage and, like, stack damage over time. Drop your explosive trap when you're trying to get away, drop your caltrops when you're trying to get away, uh, but also if you're trying to do damage to the enemy. But for the most part, man, I don't know. It's the kind of thing where I think that to have an accurate opinion on how good this game is, you're gonna need to put in, you know, maybe the 20 hours or 10 hours required to at least get some level of proficiency at it, and that's just not what I do, unfortunately. So my honest and unfortunate opinion is that, for those of you out there who are watching this, the $20 that you could spend on Forge would likely be better spent uh, getting something like Natural Selection 2 or, you know, getting yourself a, a Dota code if you don't have one or, you know, maybe even just playing a free-to-play uh, competitive game like, you know, Planet Side 2 or Tribes or uh, even Super Monday Night Combat or something like that because, as is, I mean, there's good fundamentals here like the game looks good I think it sounds awful I have no idea how well it's balanced it's impossible to tell because I can't play against anybody who's basically at my skill level which is pretty bad uh, but I don't know even if the potential is there the execution either is not there or is there but obscured so much that it's difficult for somebody who isn't like a master of the game and able to see like the statistics and the inner workings in the background uh, to, to really figure it out. Most of the time I play this game, I spend entirely confused, and it's kind of, uh, damning. That was a good shot, though. It's kind of damning, uh, to the developers that I actually had to visit their website in order to figure out how to play their game. Like, that's something that should be, uh, inherent into the game itself. This guy scares the shit out of me and strikes me as someone who understands what he's doing here. Uh, we're gonna keep playing this one until the end here. As you can see, I'm, like, the middle of my team, 0-2-1. This has been more of my average experience, uh, which has been right around the middle of the pack, but also pretty goddamn bad. And a huge skill gulf versus, uh, like, beta players and new players as well. Which, you know, unfortunately I happen to fall in the latter group. I, I hate when this happens with, I mean, I love getting early access to games. I think it's great, especially in multiplayer games, for developers to get a chance to, you know, check balance tweaks and stuff like that. Uh, and, and how the community feels like they're enjoying the game so far. But at the same time, it does all cr also create this experience where, you know, not everybody's getting in on the ground floor. Like, a lot of people are going to be severely outmatched when the game actually comes out because of that skill gulf. And in order for that to 
B, offset, you really need some kind of either good matchmaking or the ability to have just like a separate beginner's lounge. Maybe people are going to smurf in that. Look at these guys like all rolling together and our team is not communicating at all. That's the other thing that I get with this game is that there's just been like no communication. I can count on one finger the number of times that I've heard somebody using voice communication in this game, even though it is built in. Um, and text communication mostly consists of people just bitching about other people on their team. So the in-game community is not as supportive as... Uh, in a game like Natural Selection 2. I realize I'm bringing up Natural Selection 2, Dota, League of Legends a lot. Basically, my <laughs> impression so far uh, is that if you want to play a competitive multiplayer game, don't play this one, play one of those instead. Uh, Natural Selection 2 in particular is a lot of fun if you're looking for a kind of unique experience. I realize it's a very different kind of game than what we're dealing with here, uh, but still. And again, take my advice with a grain of salt. I'm actively telling you here, do your own research. If you're concerned about dropping the cash on this, uh, just make sure that you read someone, a review from someone who spent more time with it than I have. If you're just checking out this game to see if you have a passing interest in it, just by looking at me playing, my honest impressions are that this game is something that I will not be spending more time with because there's better alternatives out there. Uh, we do have two people here. Maybe we can actually catch this guy now and do some damage, but I worry that we're just walking into some trap here, or that this guy is just simply better than us. By the way, I've been basically not blocking any attacks so far in the entire game. Oh, come on, get him! So, I mean, there is my fault for, for doing that as well, but again, I, I just, I can't feel when I'm being hit, basically. And the audio auto balancing in the game, which you can see is basically working right now, if you looked at the top a second ago, I don't feel like it works. Almost every game that I've been in has been a fucking landslide. In any case, I think I'm just going to call it quits on Forge here, because this is becoming, by the way, rage quitting. Big issue, as you can see here, in the difference in, in terms of the teams. And that happens almost every single, well, not almost every single time, uh, but oftentimes when I'm playing the game. And there doesn't seem to be any deterrent for that, like a, you know, a lever cue or anything like that. Anyway, this video is quickly becoming in danger of just being a bitch fest with respect to Forge. So I'm going to exit out of this game and, you know, be super hypocritical. We're going to exit, exit to the menu, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the leveling up system. So there is kind of like a progress system in this game, but the way the game does it is actually something that I enjoy a good deal. So I've played as the, the Pathfinder a lot. Uh, what you do is you actually have the ability to buy levels with the experience that you get from uh, playing the game itself. So I'm at level 3 on the Pathfinder, level 1 on everyone else. But I've got enough experience to buy another level here, so let's do that. And by buying another level, we got Volley Focus Unknown. To be honest with you, I have absolutely no idea uh, what that means. But if we actually go back here... And go to... Usually there's a way to customize your player. Have I totally botched that somehow? I have no fucking idea. Oh, maybe it's in stats. It's not. It should be... Oh, it is in stats, yeah. Um, so you do have the ability, as you level up, to basically earn the ability to customize your character. So as of right now, I've unlocked one customization point. What that lets me do, it's not just a point that you can dump into, like, armor, vitality, mana, or top speed or anything like that. Because that would obviously be unfair and balance the game in the favor of uh, people who have played more of the game. Not just on skill, but on the fact that they would have more stat points to basically allocate to whatever area they wanted. What this allows you to do is say like, okay, well, I'm getting killed a lot, but my speed is okay. So I could actually say, you know what, we're gonna drop one speed uh, and then improve our armor, which is what I did with my first point. Now, I can't do anything else because I need more customization points in order to make this possible. And as far as I know, there's no like ability to respec. Oh, I guess we can. Uh, actually allocate an armor point here, which is something that I have not done yet. So why don't we put our armor points... I guess I want it into magic armor. Reset, please. Uh, I'll take it out of nature armor, which I don't understand, and put it into magic armor, which I do. In any case, uh, so yeah, the balancing in the game doesn't come down to, you know, who has played the most, who's got the most stat points unlocked. It actually it allows you to tailor the character as you see fit, which is kind of a unique idea. I don't know if it totally works. Though, uh, again, from a balance perspective, I need much, much more time in the game to know if it works. Uh, there is a p supposedly a gear system being added as well, but it's apparently work in progress. But overall, I don't know. I have, I have negative impressions of Forge. I hate to say it because I always like to support ambitious, independent games like this. Uh, but I, I don't feel like this is a satisfying experience. Probably fully 80% of the time I've been playing this game, I've just been frustrated beyond belief. And I've spent a good chunk of time reading the forums as well, trying to figure out how to play as the characters. Know that if you are getting into this game, there's probably going to be a huge period uh, where it's very distasteful for you. Or very, uh, you know, uncomfortable, basically. You're not going to enjoy yourself, most likely. 
maybe once you crack that shell, you get into a more meaty game that is actually uh, a lot of fun and carries a lot of strategic elements, and maybe if you can get a team that actually communicates. But that's a lot of maybes, and I feel like for most people, myself included, uh, if the game doesn't grab you in that first couple of hours, it's unlikely that you are going to stick with it. Uh, especially given that this is 20 bucks, whereas a lot of the uh, premier multiplayer games online right now are free or close to it. But in any case, if you want to buy it, it is available on Steam now. And if you uh, buy a copy before December 18th, you get a second copy to give away. This is a title in Steam's Greenlight Initiative, so the community did vote on this. So hopefully, uh, for the developer's sake, there are people who voted on it that will now feel like they should buy it. Because they, they voted for it because they wanted to buy it, basically, in any case. I don't know, I'm rambling at this point. This is Forge. Uh, I think there's a lot of better alternatives from a multiplayer gameplay perspective, unfortunately. But if you like what you see, feel free to check it out. And as always, I encourage you, especially on a video like this of a game where uh, the, the mechanics are quite deep, uh, to check out somebody who spent a lot more time with the game. Although, obviously, there's going to be some bias there, because if you spend a lot more time with the game, you're probably going to be more likely to have enjoyed it. Anyway, again, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.